Zentangle friends. My name is Annie, Certified Zentangle Teacher and Certified Botanical Illustrator. And today I am going to be showing you a really beautiful, light and airy, wispy tangle called Organza. Organza is this beautiful one here, super simple, reminds me of like a DNA strand. But I love it because you can put it in some really wonderful places to loosen things up and, and to wrap things in. Here's another example I use. Here's a class I taught called Pandemic Posies. And as you can see, I'm using it almost like lace here, which gave me the idea of actually doing something kind of like lace with it. So this is gonna be our project for today. Also using my tangle Eros. And I, start, I started out by just playing around. And I thought, you know, this is pretty disorganized. It just grew organically, like a good Zen tangle should, right? Um, not planned at all. But this, and then this one is kind of fun. I kept playing too with that, with that idea of the wrap in this circle uh, with this lace. But this is what I ended up with. And I think it's easy enough for us all to do this little organza lace doily. So for this class, we're gonna be using, besides the black paper, whatever you have, I'm tracing a sandala for this. I'm also gonna be needing, you're gonna need a white pencil, a white colored pencil, a black colored pencil, any brand you want. I happen to have here, this is a Faber-Castell white and a um, Tombow black. And then uh, two Jelly Roll pens. One is 08, that's the thicker one. And then the 05 is a little finer. And most importantly, we're going to need a little plastic eraser of some kind. This one's a really nice fine one. I love it. There's others out there that are pen-like erasers and th that would work probably fine too. You probably do want a plastic eraser, not just the kneaded eraser because you're going to need to get very detailed um, in terms of getting close to where you want to lift your white pencil. So those are materials and let's, let's just get started. I'm gonna start by penciling in my circle, just so I know the placement of my Eros pattern. And we will be going over that. You can't see it very well on camera, but I can. That's the important thing, right? So we're gonna start out by putting our little Eros rose here. Let me just take a look at it again. <laughs> I should have my, I should have my, um, tangle tag out so I can know my own step out. Eros starts out as a little spiral. And then starting at the top, we're gonna bow out to make almost kind of like a bud. And you're asking now, what pen are you using? I'm using my 08. And then I'm going to just do these little, little triangular shapes. And then I'll do my rose petal shapes. I like to kind of make them closer at the top and then get further away. And then of course we're gonna divide them up with our bowed line, like every two ridges. This one has three, but that's okay. And then we're gonna weight this bowed line a little bit towards the center. And then I'm gonna switch up to my O five pin and do some hatching. Let me look at this. Yeah. So we're going to hatch here just to give it kind of that almost shading, but very, very light uh, flicks, very light eyelash strokes is what we call them. I usually like to pull toward myself. I'm flicking away for the purpose of showing you. And then we, we would like to put a few 
leaves, one or two or even three. I'm going to put mine out here so that they're not too close to the edge on my circle. I'm going to start with my little spike. This is one of my patterns I call spike. I'm going to have to turn this. And then we bow our lines from the midrib out for our veins. I'm still on my 05 pen. You could probably use the 08 on that too. And then I always like to do a little bit of overlap. Oh, let's see, I'm going to go out this way, maybe make a smaller one. Next, I'm going to do a fun little strand of organza first, just to show you how that pattern goes. And I'm going to start here. And just go off the page like that. Now I'm going to get my 08 back because um, I'm going to reserve the 05 for the little tiny spokes within the organza. Let's start at the top here to show you how this goes. It's, it's so brilliant. Oh, I forgot to mention to you the person who stepped this out is Ruth Howell CZT. And I just absolutely love this pattern. So I'm going to bow out pretty far. And I'm just going to keep doing this kind of S curve all the way down, crossing over the line. Turn your paper when you need to. And then we're going to go in and fill in each of these little hills with a, a fan, a radiating uh, spokes. And I am going to get the finer pen out for that. And you, you view this as a hill, kind of like a half sun. And then you're just going to make, from starting from the middle, fan out from that point like that. And we're, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay in this direction as not to make you sick with me turning my paper all the time. I'm going to try to do all the ones going in this direction first. Could have made this one a little bit bigger, but in terms of the bump. But that's kind of the beauty of the Zentangle, that everything... Nothing has to be perfect, right? So here we go on this one. And then the final step for this pattern, organza, is to just take your 08, this is the larger pen, you could even use a 10, and we're going to put little dots at the end of each of those spokes. And that is what's going to make this look like undulating lace band. You can really see it kind of coming together as a little twisting band. So beautiful, yet so very simple. This is my opinion of an exquisite Zentangle. Easy, but beautiful. It's a little bit harder to turn my sketchbook than it is to turn a Zentangle tile or a smaller piece of paper. But I just love this paper. Really smooth.
So that is organza. Isn't that pretty? So now what we're going to do is we're going to trace our circle. This time I am going to use my jelly roll. Lightly, you know, the trick with the jelly roll, the lighter the touch, the easier the ink flows. Oh, that turned out pretty well. I just need to clean up a little here. And now we're going to do that same pattern all the way around the circle. I am using my 08. Take your time. Do be mindful that this jelly roll takes a little bit of time to dry, so you don't want to like pull your hand through what you've just drawn. Leave it to me to be messy. All right, so now we go and do our little spokes. Oh, I'm gonna okay, switch up my pen, taking my 05. You want this to be fine. It's actually kind of miraculous how well this jelly roll is behaving. Sometimes I have such a problem with them uh, in terms of just clogging. This one is flowing beautifully. I know I've said this many times in my tutorials in the past. If you're using a jelly roll and it does not want to work, of course, you usually want to have a piece of scratch paper to get it going, right? And if you still can't get it going, you can roll it in your hand for a while to warm it up and then scratch some more. And it usually, usually starts then pretty well. Now I'm gonna switch my pen back to the 08 and put my little dots on the ends of those spokes. Clean up, make sure that the spokes actually connect to the line. That's good. Okay, so look how pretty this already is, huh? So now we're going to weave our doily. We're just gonna make uh, the basic floors pattern in here, which is um, like this. I'm just gonna start at the top and try to make my squares as even as I can. And I did use my tiny 05 on this and then I went back to the 08 for the dots so here we go I did not use a ruler I just eyeballed it so let me might start I think it's always good to start in the middle so now you might be asking do I cross over here or not? I am not. I think it will make it look too messy and too busy. And we're gonna pretend that these, these laces are kind of flipping up so you wouldn't necessarily see that much below them because we're gonna be doing some shading things to this. So the answer is no, don't go through the little organza pattern. Ah, I got awfully thin. Okay, so I'm gonna go like this. I might correct that. So, you know, it's not a big deal to correct. And the reason is, this is black. If you have, I have a Tombow black marker here, and I'm just gonna correct that line by going over the top of it. And after we do our white pencil on top, you won't even see this. So if you get a little dot here or there or something that you absolutely can't live with, go ahead and correct it. This is more Zentangle inspired art. If you can live with it, fine. If you can't, I think we have the freedom to correct since we want our art pieces to be as good as they can be. Kind of drawing out of my elbow
Now we're going to go back and just do our little dots with our 08. And I know floors goes like this, so if you have room, you can actually do the little diamond shape. I think it's very pretty. In fact, the other one I only did dots, and I think this time I'm going to do the little diamonds. There we go. So, whew, that's a lot of diamonds, but what a lovely Zen flow that offers. Before we do our next step, which is to go and fill in pretty much everything you'll see with our white colored pencil, I want to make sure you let this dry completely, 100%. So I'm going to stop for a minute and make sure that my whole piece is dry because I don't want to be pulling up any of the white jelly roll with my colored pencil. So I'll be back in a bit. Okay, I'm back. And now my piece is completely dry, I can tell you that. But I also have to tell you, I just recorded an entire section of showing you how we're going to shade this. And uh, in doing so, I finished and it looked great and come to see that my recording had not started. So let me tell you how forgiving this is. What I then did was I, I took my black eraser. Black is great to have when you're erasing on black paper. And I just took all the shading off and we will start over again. <laughs> and I will show you how we're gonna do this. We want to make this look three-dimensional. And let's start from the beginning with our Eros pattern here. All we're gonna do is take our colored pencil and color in the entire Eros rose and the two petals. Now, I know you might be asking, can I use my General's charcoal for this? And I would say no, because you're not gonna be happy. It's just gonna smear all over the place because we're gonna do everything in white and it's just gonna smear everywhere. This will make it uh, set up really nicely. We can erase this very cleanly. That's how we're gonna get our shadows, okay? And, and our highlights. There's different ways of doing this. I've actually taught a botanical illustration class on black and how to draw botanicals on black. But we're, we're just gonna do this in a way that we're gonna to try to keep the highlights white and the shadows dark. And the lace will of course be white. Just trust me on this one. I did it a couple different ways and I think this is the easiest way for everyone. Just coloring this in. I see that I've sort of lost some of my, uh, some of my line work when I did my erasing. And this is one of those things that you can always do, you know, at the end, you can go back and restate certain lines if, if they come off in your coloring. So now I have to be careful because that's wet, <laughs> but I will try. Notice my stroke is that typical stroke I'm always showing you all, very close together, but I'm going so fast that even though it looks like I'm scrubbing back and forth, I'm not. I'm actually lifting as I go. The, I pull towards myself and lift, pull towards myself and lift. So it's not scrubbing back and forth, even though the motion is so fast, it looks like it might be. I am saving out the midrib because we're not going to be uh, needing it. We're going to erase that out anyway. Right now I'm just concentrating on filling the leaf in white and the rose. Everything is white. So it's pretty nicely saturated. I have a sharp pencil. You always must use a sharp pencil. And why? Because you have to get into the tooth of the paper. Otherwise this colored pencil is just going to sit on top. Okay, now I've got my sweet little Mono Zero Tombow eraser. We're going to get very defined shading here by erasing where we want it to appear darker. So in the center we want, down here we want it to be a little darker because here is going to be like the highlight because this is where the fruit bows out, right? Or the bud. 
I'm just going to pick up a little bit in there. And then, of course, all the way around here, I might bring it up here so that these tips stay white and it looks like the uh, petal leaves are sort of undulating going up and down this is pretty subtle and you could just leave it like that if you'd like but as i've told you many many times what our aim is in any good art piece is to have a lot of value change that means a lot of light lights and dark darks so i am going to take my black colored pencil oops i forgot to lift this guy this one i kind of saved out i'm going to lift also around the midrib on the outside either side it's going to make it look like it's dipping down there and that that's going to be in highlight right where it's kind of bowing up the other thing that we need to also erase is underneath these petals because the rose would be sitting on top of the leaves casting a little bit of a shadow so that is there and now I'm going to go back in with my colored pencil black and I am going to just really go over that black paper just really emphasizing those blacks for example on, under these little spikes I couldn't really do that with the eraser so fine see how we're getting a lot of dimension there here I'm going to go really dark against that midsection A little bit dark here and then I'm going to go back in with my white and really uh, bring out those highlights again like these petal tips and this section here and have a little bit better transition just lightly go in there with my pencil eraser And that's it, that's the shading. So for the doily part, we're gonna have fun and we're just going to shade everything inside the rim, meaning also this, right? Even, even this area here of the organza, we're gonna shade everything else in white. We will leave these outer organza ruffles and these as well. We're not, gonna, we're not going to shade those at all. So here we go. Again, concentrate on the fact that you need to have a sharp pencil. You can use whatever stroke you're most comfortable with. Sometimes this elliptical stroke will give you the best coverage. It just takes quite a bit longer. What I like to do is actually use the, um, the straight stroke first. And then if I have to go back in, I will go back over the top with the elliptical to give it some more coverage. We're just going to draw, we're just going to shade over everything. That's the easiest way. We could save out where we're going to be lifting, but it's really just easiest this way because you can get more targeted with your pen eraser that way. One thing I don't know if you've noticed, what I'm doing is, look how sharp my pencil still is, even though I've done all of this. I keep rotating my pencil as I am shading and as I rotate I am sharpening the point at the same time so I don't have to use the, sh the pencil sharpener as much and I won't wear down my pencil quite so fast. I'm kind of drawing on the side of my tip and then turning ever so slightly just every once in a while. Okay, I'm getting close to being done. I'm saturating this all pretty well. Looking up at the camera, trying to find my bare spots. That's a good tip. Once in a while, uh, it's really good to take your phone camera and look at your piece that you're working on through the phone. And your lens will show you something a little different than what you're looking at in, in real life. It shows up the flaws a lot faster and you can see where there might be something that you missed or some bare spots. We're going to go from here because some of these bare spots are okay because we're going to be lifting anyway.
But look how much different this and how much more dimensional and how this lifts forward because we've worked the shading. We're going to do the same. We're going to do some more. We're going to do some of that with all of our organza, but also around the rose. Let's start around the rose because this rose, if it were sitting up, if it were a three dimensional cloth rose, it would be sitting up off the lace and casting a little bit of a shadow, right? A little bit of a drop shadow. So we're going to erase around the petals. Can you erase a little bit down here on the um, leaves? And then of course we're going to go back in with our dark darks. I'm only doing it on this one side here. And then because we do want to have some really light lights, I'm going to go back in with my white colored pencil and make sure that next to those darks the white is nice and saturated so that you can really see the shadow and you can finesse the transition there somewhat okay see how that's lifting up and you can see the rose more distinctly now we're going to do that with we're going to do that with all of the organza ruffles so I'm going to start on the outside and on the flat side, I'm just going, staying pretty close to the line. I'm not going out too far. So let's do all those first. <laughs> Since I did this already once, it's going pretty fast. It's like the paper retained its memory of my strokes and my erasing. Now when we come to this part of the ruffle that's got the dots, we are going to erase a little bit further out and again I'm also with this pen or pencil eraser I don't know exactly what they're called I am doing this in a circular motion and as I'm doing this I am creating eraser crumbs so let me show you what we like to do in botanical illustration we have to draw very clean and very neat I often use a feather I have beautiful feathers I don't have one here handy but I do have one of my paint brushes and I am removing my crumbs, my eraser crumbs with this brush. You can use yeah, a soft brush, like I said, a feather. You don't want to use your hand because your hand has lots of oils on it. And especially on the black paper, that's going to show up. I often draw actually with a glove, a white, one of those photographer gloves on my hand. And I just cut the fingers out at the tip just because then that this this part of my hand is covered where it can have oils oh, that's just another little a little tip and or you can make yourself a you can put a piece of paper like this so that you don't smear so much and I use often plexiglass with little feet on it so I can actually see what I'm still doing rather than covering up my work I'm thinking of doing a um, whole tutorial on some favorite tools and tips for drawing. I think I got everything and now I'm going to go back in with my sharp black pencil and bring out some of those blacks. I, I think I've got this Tombow black right now but I think the um, Prismacolor black would work really well because it's very uh, waxy and soft and I think it would do really well here. Now this will all feel way different on a black Zentangle tile. It really does make a difference what drawing surface you're working on, how you work it. So I haven't tried it on the black yet, but I do know that that's a much softer paper and it's going to work up way differently. I think I've got it pretty well. And now I got to go back in there with my white and make sure that it's covered nicely to have that contrast. And now I'm really taking my time making sure that these little squares are nice and saturated with an even stroke. You don't want our 
lace to look threadbare. Just take your time and enjoy the coloring. I just love the coloring, the shading. You're almost sad when it ends. It's kind of like reading a good book. It's really starting to look like a lace doily, isn't it? So these little undulating uh, ruffles are basically causing a bit of a drop shadow. I mean, they're not exactly realistically shaded, but they do give us that feeling, right? That they're, they're causing a little bit of a drop shadow onto the, the white of the lace. And I can see that this is a little bit there. And then when you're done, you can sit back and look at it and decide if you need to add a little bit more white jelly roll and restate some lines that may have gotten lost. Sometimes it's kind of nice if the lines sort of float beneath the colored pencil almost in a mysterious way. One other thing while I'm just finishing up here, what we can talk about is that this, just like anything that we draw in a journal especially, but also on your Zantangle tiles, uh, if you handle them a lot and if you put them away and they are on top of each other, they're going to smear and lift your pigments and your graphite and cause them to fade. So I like to spray all of my uh, work with a workable fixative that is a archival fixative. And two good ones are Krylon, Krylon Workable Fixative, and Blair. I like the matte, obviously. Uh, you don't really want to sheen on this stuff. You can even go over it, uh, spray it lightly, let it dry, and spray it again. Just do a couple coats, and that really protects it. And the nice thing about the workable fixatives is that once you've sprayed them, you can still go back on and work it with your pigments and your graphite and then come back and spray it again. That is another tip for you. Get yourself a workable fixative. I am going to definitely be spraying this because it's in my book and I don't want it to smear. I am working on a book from Paris. It's called, oh, it's Aliabete. Uh, it's a Paris Copic journal, Aliabete editions. And Copic meaning that it's bound like this so that you can open it up flat, right? It's just totally flat, which is wonderful. Now I have actually filled almost this whole journal. We, we make journal covers at Botangle in leather, which are beautiful. I can put a picture of them. But I took this one out and put a new one in because this one is pretty much full. But this one is called Zebra, so it has the black and the white paper in it. My other one has just got the white paper, but it's really wonderful for uh, doing uh, jelly roll and white. So I want to show you once more. Here is my sample, and here is today's demo. So it's pretty easy to reproduce this almost exactly like I did. So I hope you enjoyed learning about beautiful, beautiful pattern organza and have fun creating some lace. And please, please share your uh, work with us on my Annie's Botango alumni student Facebook page. We really love being inspired. Some of you come up with such beautiful, beautiful things. So thanks for joining me today. I will see you next time. That's it for today's Tangle. Thanks for joining me. If you like these lunchtime tutorials, please give them a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I also invite you to check out my website for classes that I have scheduled or to purchase my tangle tags for your favorite step outs. That's bowtangle.net. I'm leaving you with some other links too. Zentangle.com, where you can learn more about the Zentangle method from its founders, Rick Roberts and Maria Thomas. You can also visit their store there for a multitude of Zentangle paper tiles, tools, books, and kits. Tanglepatterns.com is that site I talk about where you can explore hundreds of tangle patterns, read about them, and get the step out, which is basically the deconstruction of the pattern. And finally, if you'd like to share your beautiful results with me and my student community, please join Annie's Botangle alumni Facebook page. 
We're a private group where we inspire each other with our work and offer tips and useful information about art and Zentangle.